Hi, TV Recapped here. For some reason, fantasy is notoriously tough to pull off in an innovative way. For today's episode, we will discuss The Legend of the Seeker's first season, featuring a woodsman who takes on a journey of fighting evil after discovering his prophecy to become a guardian of repressed people. The show is adapted from Terry Goodkind's Sword of Truth book series. The story follows Kaylin and Richard and their journey to defy a usurping prince in the midst of their complicated relationship with each other. Destiny and a mystical sword propels Richard, a country lad, into a larger, more perilous world. He is aided by a wizard who serves as a knowledgeable advisor, Zed. Will he fulfill his prophecy of fighting against the great evil as a seeker, or will his affection towards his confessor turn things upside down? In a forest, the three, Zed, Richard, and Kaelin, wander before being attacked by spears. In their panic, Zed gets pierced from behind, and subsequently, Richard gets stabbed by his confessor, Kaelin herself. She reveals to him that it is the prophecy which turned her into betraying him. Richard then wakes Kaylin up, who is still breathing heavily from her nightmare. She tells him how she dreamt of killing him and is afraid that the prophecy might come true. Richard assures her that it can be stopped, but Kaylin refuses to believe him. The two share a moment together before Kaylin decides to stop right away, thinking that their actions will lead them to further misery. Only Kaylin and Zed know what truly lies behind when a seeker and his confessor become too involved in each other. Zed insists Kaylin that she needs to fulfill her promise by guiding Richard. She refuses and is firm in her decision to leave for the sake of Richard's role as the Seeker of Truth. The Seeker is prophesied to defeat the evil Rawl. Kaelin leaves Richard and Zed in search of another confessor who can assist them, fearing that her affections for Richard may jeopardize his efforts to stop the tyranny of Lord Rawl. Later, a moored Sith who can reflect back any spell directed towards them kidnaps Richard while Zed escapes. In Kaelin's absence, Denna and Constance were able to capture Richard. By torturing Richard both physically and mentally, Denna begins to break him down. Because Dark and Rawl wants Richard to live, Richard keeps resisting and boasts that Denna couldn't kill him, and Denna retaliates by murdering him instantly with her powerful Aegeal that causes great pain. Then she places her hands on his face and exhales a white mist. So far, we can see how Jessica Murray successfully portrays Denna. In the first few minutes into the episode, I get that she gives the feels of Maleficent. Her aura, composure, and tone of voice, it perfectly matches that of the infamous Evil Mother. When Richard comes back to life, Denna reveals to him that she possesses the breath of life and could bring him or any trainee back to life if he were to die during his training. The only thing that could potentially save Richard from Denna in this scenario was death itself, but as he goes through through hell, he learns that it will not end his suffering even still. After that, Richard is thrown into a cell with Benedict. He reveals to Richard that he was abducted with his youngest daughter, who is to be groomed to be a Mord Sith. Richard was taught about the Mord Sith by Benedict and how they are trained. Despite Richard's best efforts, Benedict, who had already been shattered and ruled over by Denna, stops him on his plans to escape. When the soldiers come to take him, he recognizes an opportunity to flee, but he chooses to focus his attention instead on Benedict, who is strangely unmoving in his position. Apparently, he has been working with the Mord Sith all along. Richard is distraught to see how brainwashed Benedict is. In the next scene, we see Denna coming in after Richard finishes his training for the day. She goes over to him and asks him if he's fine. It is of surprise to see here that Richard is slowly falling under the Mord Sith's control. Richard begins to care about Denna. Denna gives Richard her Aegeal so he could attempt to get away. Richard's experience with the Aegeal showed him that it inflicts agony on both the person holding it and the victim. He then feels sorry for Denna for having to live life using the Aegeal. Meanwhile, Kaylin continues her journey to find another confessor for Richard. She searches in the woods to find her friend Lara. She is met with Lara's men and then seeks her out. Kaylin almost successfully persuades Lara to take her place while she stays behind to care for the community. Confessors have the ability to make people do their bidding and be loyal servants. After hearing that Lara confessed her entire community, Kaylin is shocked. Everyone in the room is her loyal serf. This is a major offense for the confessors who should not interfere with normal people's lives. Kaylin refuses to let Lara become Richard's new confessor because Kaylin is appalled by what Lara has done. In contrast, the Mord Sith torture people in order to brainwash them to do their bidding. Both are very wrong, but confessors take very little effort to be able to turn someone. 
Zed is on the run from the Mord's death and he comes upon the two of them and describes what happened to Richard. Lara volunteers to employ her confessed people as a combat force to rescue Richard since they no longer feel fear and would not hesitate to fight to the death. Kaelin steadfastly resists using people in this manner until Zed grudgingly points out how outnumbered the trio are and that his own magic is ineffective against the Mord Sith. The atmosphere and visuals up to this point are actually pretty good for the most part. This series takes place in New Zealand and its extensive landscape consisting of hills and mountains is breathtaking. Because of all the suffering, Richard has no choice but to retreat into his imagination to picture himself with Kaelin. This helps him feel better so that he can continue to endure the discomfort that he is experiencing. After Denna jolts Richard out of his daydream, Richard is coaxed into describing the powers that Kaelin possesses by Denna. To Richard's dismay, Denna informed him that Kaelin, as a confessor, her power would wreak havoc on his mind every time they make love. It is just now that he realized why Kaelin was avoiding him and dismissing their feelings for each other. Denna hopes that Richard falls in love with her instead of Kaelin. As the villagers move forward to reclaim Richard, Lara asks Kaelin to organize a face-to-face -face encounter with a Mord Sith. Kaelin declines her request. Instead, Kaelin will face the Mord Sith herself. Zed gives his reluctant approval while simultaneously wishing her the best of luck. This program has been criticized to be very different from the books, but it gives off a nice lightness with a few heavier parts. This has been very reminiscent of other fantasy TV shows like Xena the Warrior Princess and Hercules. Richard asks Constance to continue torturing him when Denna brings him in to begin the training. Upon hearing this, Denna is enraged with jealousy towards Constance. Richard quickly comforts her by telling her how concerned he is for her as he knows that the Ajil inflicts pain on anyone who touches it. He doesn't want Denna to get hurt. The two almost kiss before Constance breaks the moment. She lets in Kaelin, who has just come to hopefully save Richard. Kaelin tries to negotiate with the Mord Sith by frightening her that an army will be coming for them. Denna laughs this off as she knows that there are only a handful of villagers out out there who aren't soldiers. After Denna is challenged by Kaelin, she tries to intimidate her into releasing Richard. Denna understands that Lara needs to die for the confessed people to be liberated from the enthrallment and escape their bondage. When Kaelin's bluff is called, she tries to battle her way out, but Richard is able to stop her by grabbing Denna's Ajil and using it to stop Kaelin. Under the influence of the Mord Sith, Richard starts to lose control of his thoughts and actions. He advances towards Kaelin with the intention of hitting her with the Ajil, which will cause her immediate immediate pain. Both she and Richard are caught off guard by this turn of events. Despite the fact that the weapons used are all bladed, the action isn't too gory, but the torment is. An inconsistent, lumpy, and occasionally great show is the consequence of the show's two distinct personalities not meshing well enough. Denna enslaves Kaelin and decides to educate her. Richard visits Kaelin in a prison while she is recovering, speaking to her through the door. In fear of the pain Denna would inflict on him, he pleads with Kaelin to take him away and just confess him. The only thing he'd prefer to do is be a mindless slave to Kaelin rather than Denna. Kaelin, on the other hand, is unable to bring herself to do it to Richard. The choice between love and duties lie forwardly in this part. Kaelin, as a lawful confessor, does not want to use her abilities beyond what is needed for. As much as she wants to keep Richard to herself by easily confessing him, she chooses not to. She doesn't want anything between them to be caused by magic. On their march toward the kingdom of Lord Rawl, the villagers who were bonded by a spell flee the region as soon as the forces of Duharan located and executed Lara. Raf and Zed are left alone with Lara as she lay in her final moments. Kaelin's fate is kick-started by Denna, who provides Richard the option to mercilessly murder Kaelin as his last step of the training. An ajeel to Kaelin's throat doesn't work even when Denna shoves a knife in Richard's hand. Richard can't stand to kill the person he adores even when under the slavery of Denna. The battle inside the temple then starts. Richard fights with the soldiers while Kaelin fights with Denna using the dagger Richard previously held. The Sword of Truth is returned to him eventually. After Kaelin fails to bring Denna down, Richard steps forward with his sword in his hand. Even though Denna tries to halt Richard using her magic, he nonetheless manages to keep going and eventually impales Denna in the process. As Denna stutters, Richard gently 
finally informs her that he has learned to bear pain because of her efforts that led to her ultimate death. The two manage to escape and leave the temple without any issues. Then, the scene just cut to the two, peacefully rekindling back together that night. After that, Kaylin and Richard talk about their sentiments for each other. Richard furiously asks Kaylin why she hasn't told him about a seeker and a confessor's fate together. After apologizing, Kaylin expresses her hope that he could now see why the two of them could never be together. Richard reflects that Denna has trained him well by having him suffer silently. We see some cliché in this part as the two unite again. Their attitudes seem like nothing has happened, like their lives weren't just at stake a while ago. Meanwhile, Denna's corpse is discovered by Constance and she revives her with a breath of life. The end of the episode cuts to Denna waking up, ready to embark on a new evil journey. Love, truth, and justice are some of the most powerful forces in the world, and this series is a terrific reminder of that. It's about fantastical beings like wizards and fairies. What did you think would happen next? This is already a 13-year-old episode, so let me know if you've already read the book or watched this TV series before. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.